don't buy fish from strangers. That's the mantra of the New England fishmongers. The idea being that when you know where your fish is coming from and who caught it, you can trust it's going to be fresher and of a higher quality than any other seafood you can buy. When Captain Tim Ryder, owner of the New England Fishmongers, invited Chris Megan and I to join him for a day of hook and line commercial fishing, we jumped at the chance. While Chris spent most of his childhood summers in Maine, this is my first time in vacation land. Chris and I arrive in Maine early enough to take in a spectacular late summer sunset, complete with bald eagle flyover. I don't get to enjoy it for long though, A bit after midnight, we head to the dock where we meet Tim, Kayla, and Kevin. We load the boat and depart for a patch of rough bottom 65 miles off the main coast known as Fippany's Ledge. Fippany's is a well-known fishing hotspot for cod, pollock, haddock, and even Atlantic halibut, which are a fairly regular catch at certain parts of the season. Our trip almost ends before it begins, when seas far larger than those forecast greet us in the Gulf of Maine. But Tim was confident the Finlander would handle it, and six hours later, I woke to a rising sun on the offshore fishing grounds. One of the ways that we Pollock fish a position, you'll see Kayla and Kevin sitting on the rail. We call that the pro position. That's, uh, that's how I fish, I <laughs> sit on the rail. And you put your hand on the reel and it takes the pressure off. My dad decided to do two feet out the boat and a blue shark grabbed the Pollock and almost yarded him in. Oh. There you go, Kayla. Nice. Nice, doubles. So even after you, you hook up, I mean, the. Ideally, you're bringing multiple fish to the surface, so you'll let you, it just hang for a minute. Yeah, you give it a shake, sometimes that second one will grab on, and this is part of the game right here, too. That is all part of Pollock fishing. So, Tim, we're not using what I would think of as a traditional jigging technique. We're doing more squidding. Tell me about that. Uh, yeah, squidding is a technique that we use, uh, particularly for Pollock, where we let the jig down the bottom, just like you would conventional ground fishing, and then you reel up five to 10 cranks, let back down five to 10 cranks. Uh, we find that it, coaxes Pollock into biting better and also keeps the uh, cod off. Uh, you know, obviously we're trying to stay away from cod too. A variety of ground fish come over the rails, but Pollock are the primary target. Though they command a lower price per pound than haddock or cod, Pollock are large and abundant. And when the bite is on, the Finlander crew can quickly fill the fish boxes. One of the things we like to do too is we're all about speed, so you let your rod go down on its own while you're bleeding your fish, because it's all about, for us, we get to fill boxes to make a paycheck okay. out here. So that's one of our, everything we do, we try to do quick. For Tim and his crew, every second counts, and every move is made with purpose. After hooking up, they leave the rig in the water, hoping to catch multiple fish. When dropping to the bottom, 300 feet below, they place the rod in the holder, which allows them to bleed fish or clean the deck without losing precious fishing time. It takes us a few drops, but Chris and I get with the program, and soon we're fishing almost as efficiently as the rest of the crew, although not quite as effectively. Medium pollock, that's a perfect eating size pollock right there. My opinion, good eating size, 24 inch pollock. A, ah, nice haddock and cut. Is that a decent one, Kayla? A few hookups there. Ah, uh, no, we got out of that. Let me go right underneath you there. Pollock swim in these circles and it always 
happened there. Well, there's the second. Come on. A couple decent pollock there. A little shake and bake. Attic inside. Oh, the triple attic. Look at that. Very impressive. I'll tell you what, for the ride that we had coming out, this is really nice. It's definitely settling down. I was really nervous when we were, what, 400 yards out of the mouth of the harbor, and I'm like, this is really snotty. I've been, I've been doing this a long time, and Jimmy, I'm not nice going to lie that I was not feeling it this what morning. What does it eat? Oh, it's stomach. Yeah. Nice. So this is the other thing that we do with our fish, which is the most important thing for quality, yeah. is the bleed. There's a certain spot right there. You hit that, the aorta pumps. The fish bleeds out before you got a more filet in, and you get all the blood out of your filet. So it's essential as soon as you catch these fish, you're bleeding them. So don't ice them immediately either. Just, you want to let them like keep room temperature. Okay. Because if you get them really cold, like the blood will pump. Right. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. It's a good sign. That, so Tim, that kind of care for fish is what what separates fishmongers from some of the other uh, larger scale commercial operations. Yes, it too. does. Our fish has been on display at James Beard Institute and Food and Wine Magazine. And that, that technique right there is, I've seen more commercial and recreational fishermen do not bleed fish. It just takes the blood out of the filet, and if the, if the end user of it freezes the filet, it holds, it stays a lot better too. So that's number one, and then obviously uh, getting the fish packed on ice and brining is number two. Oh, shock. Just came right through and mowed it. Yeah, we got a big blue shark next to the boat here. Did you get busted off? No, he just cut it. Cut it right in half. And it's real like hell when you get close to the boat because it, that's when they get you. It's real like hell when you get up close to that boat. That's when they like to get you when you're like, when yeah, they're when they're coming range. up to the boat. Yeah. <laughs> Nice size fish right there, we'll take it. Make a nice fish taco tonight. Yeah, that guy just, my foot was about maybe six, eight inches when his dorsal came oh, underneath. Oh yeah, that's, that's standard this time of year. There he is right there. Jimmy, that, he, that's low hanging fruit for you, for him. Jimmy, he's right next to you. Yeah, I know. I see him going down. He's going to get it. Here he comes. Can't believe I got to pass him. That was, I felt like sneaking to pass the guard there. Kevin, we're going to move. We're coming off the edge here. It's getting a little, get less and less Pollock and more and more blue dogs. It's good. And, oh, what's that? I'll have that. That was part of the co-op. Two things I've learned already. One, this is a little different than the recreational fishing that we do. Two, a lot more work when you get two or three fish caught. So I think Jimmy's been trying to pop one or two off. I'm, I'm easing into it. I mean, yeah. I'm easing into it. I'm just taking it slow one at a time, and then maybe I'll no, work myself a form, up. There's a technique to it. Anchoring that, I was watching Kayla, I was watching Kevin. Anchoring that on the corner there, letting it sit there, securing the rail and just reeling takes all the pressure off it instead of trying to hold it off of it. Tell you what, this sweatshirt's coming off. Sun's out, guns out. Yeah. You throw first, Jimmy. Now get away from me. Because this Pollock fishing is such a limited bite that even if we had perfect weather all day, they, they'll turn off. Sense of urgency in our fishery is very important, especially when you come this far. There we go. Attic. Back there. If we can keep the sharks to one bite off here and there. Are you back on, Kayla? Oh, 
This is part of the electronic monitoring project on camera. So our discards, we measure so the government can get an accurate depiction of what we're catching out here. Uh, it allows us to fish in different areas because they, you know, we're on camera, they know what we're doing. Um, so it's the electronic monitoring project, which well, this actually might be a keeper pollock there on that, which is a good sign. Um, yeah, so we got to measure every discard. They know we're accurately, part of the problem with commercial and recreational fishing is that no one knows what people are throwing back. There you go, Kevin, you're right back on too. So those fish are spread out on the edge. It's a good sign. I think it's, it's funny because I think I'm jigging a little bit more on the bottom and that's a... Oh, sh Got it. We need a blue shark right behind this fish on the way up. Blue shark underneath the boat for whoever's coming up. He's coming right at my line. Oh, don't, don't hit my line. That was like a little cheese it. We, as commercial guys, you probably notice a little different style here that we like move more. We gotta make, make a living out here too. So that's why we gotta hustle and try to catch the fish as quick as we can. The bite, when the bite turns off, you don't get it back. And <clears throat> when the sharks show up, they tend to show up more and more as the day goes on too. So we all fish a lot of limited weather windows out here too, especially in the fall where we have a cutoff where we have to head in because of the weather. So we have to really make it count. That's why we run hard when we're out here the best we can. Pretty new, but you learn so much from working on both boats and working at markets because it's not just fishing, it's marketing and sales too, and networking, and you can't be afraid to walk into a restaurant with your product and try to sell it to them, um, which I think a lot of people can be kind of awkward at first if they've never done sales like that. Um, oh, I'm on, of course. Oops. It's something that a lot of young people don't get to participate in because there's not many people or commercial fishing captains that will teach young people how to fish commercially and Tim's one of them that will. He knows that so much knowledge can be lost. Commercial fishing isn't something you can just learn in school. There's no textbook about it. You have to actually get out there and participate in it to be able to pass on the knowledge. Tim, I don't know what this is, but it's that's thumping like fish, that's big. Yeah, like, I don't know, I think it might be a halibut. This is like seriously something heavy. For sure not Pollock at all. Tim, I don't know what this is, but they say they come up kind of soft and then they, they'll make another run right to bottom. That's exactly what they'll do. So they'll get, they'll come up and they'll 50 feet from the... Now it doesn't feel that heavy. Doesn't feel I mean, that it, big now? It feels heavy, but... It could have been whatever he was into, Kaylee, let go. I mean, it doesn't feel much different now than like a, a regular? big Pollock, but it's not going crazy like a big I, Pollock. I think with that whatever fish is still on there, Kayla, was wrapped into... A rock or the something? rocks, I think. And that's, yeah. that, that happens sometimes. Okay, you can tell a cusk or a wolf fish when it's coming up in the, the Pollock bite. And if all hell breaks loose, it might be a halibut. Cusk are notorious, for, bigger cusk are notorious for doing this because they live in the rocks. The dead giveaway for the halibut is when you get the leader, if you don't see any color, you know you got a halibut coming up. So not, if it is a halibut, it's decent. We just bulk gaff it? Or do you want uh, to yeah, if he looks like he's keeper, I try to go for the lip. Yep. And uh, let's see what we got here. We got color, so I don't think it's halibut. I think it's a large double or triple codfish. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, I think you're Two right. Two big codfish. One probably was in the rocks. We'll take it though. Two That's beautiful nice... cod. Look at this. And. Nice. Wow. Nice job. Thank you. Cod are a mixed blessing for the fishmongers. While cod fillets are still coveted at fish markets and seafood restaurants, due to the current state of the stocks and the current sector system of management, the fishmongers are charged $3 per pound for every cod caught, even the ones that are thrown back. 
While Kayla's doubleheader of Big Cod is a major success from my viewpoint as a recreational angler, to the commercial fisherman, it's simply not as valuable as the Pollock. Can you tell me a little bit about the boat to table model that the New England fish mongers use? Everything you see here, we process ourselves in our own facility and we get our fish to our customers as quick as we can, including restaurants uh, throughout New England. So that's, it's basically a model of uh, know where your fish is from. So I really love our hook and line pollock. Um, it's nice and thick, like a thick cod loin. Um, it's pretty mild, so you can season it however you want. Um, and it's super versatile too. You can cook it however you want. You can put it on the grill, you can pan fry it, you can sear it, you can bake it like baked haddock. Pretty much cook it any way you'd cook haddock or cod, but it holds up better. I think it has a little bit of a higher fat content, so the flakes kind of stay together. Nice pollock there with a codfish on the bottom. That's nice, Kelly. I enjoy all the fish at home that we eat. The one thing about all these fish that I would like to throw in is seasonality. The best fish is a fresh fish. All the fish are great fresh, so focus on what's being coming off the boats. We have a lot of people that get disappointed sometimes because we don't have haddock, but I'd rather have a fresh pollock right here over a two-week-old haddock. So just like anything, it's like when you go to the farm, you get the vegetables that are in season, right? It's coming into apple season, best time for apples. When you come out here, if this is what's biting, that's what's best to eat. Is that Johnny's crust? Definitely found my niche. Found my kindred spe species. Both slow moving bottom dwellers. <laughs> Nice pollock, huh? Yeah, with the blue shark right behind him. Being able to buy fish from the people who caught it is a rare thing in the commercial fishing industry. But that, along with the responsible fishing practices, is what the fishmongers have built their business on. And while that model has become popular among seafood consumers in northern New England, it definitely hasn't been easy. Do you foresee that your blueprint of what you're doing will start catching on with more and more folks out there that are going to just if bypass they the middle look at man. how many years it shaved off my life expectancy absolutely not because this has been the hardest thing and by far this thing has challenged me more than anything in my yeah. life it's pushed me to like the brink we're trying to do this to make a living but not be greedy that's the difference right Same story with the codfish, just put them on the board and throw them back, or? Yep, same with the small cod, yep. And we get to pay $3 a pound for that, too. Nice job, Jimmy. Nice no, job. No, it's, it's all part of it. No, you're not invited it is, back, Jimmy. We're a fan of, it just, it is what it is. I don't think he should come back. So the nice thing about this boat is we're a commercial vessel, so we don't uh, we don't charge for the, for the price of admission. So one of the things that I'm blessed with is, uh, the way we fish, I invite, um, including anyone that's watching the show, reach out to us. Uh, we take people all the time that haven't been or want to go as uh, free guests. We just put you to work for the day, we'll give you some fish for dinner. That's and, a great and, uh, point. It really is. It's a, you know, for people that have never been out here and experienced this, to get out here, you know, 50, 60 miles off the coast. We, it's awesome to bring people out that don't have a chance to see this. And I think it's one of the things that this fishery is awesome for us. As Tim predicted, the fishing slows down as the morning wears on. By noon, throwback pollock and undesirable species began to outnumber the keeper-sized fish, and Captain Tim decided to call it a day. Though the fish boxes aren't exactly topped off, 
We call it a day so we can see the other side of the fishmonger's business plan at work. The fishing may be over, but there's still work to be done. While Tim steers for port, Kevin and Kayla gut the fish, ice them down, and wash down the boat before heading below deck for some well-deserved shut-eye. After returning to Port and Elliot, we drive to the Plum Island Kitchen in Newbury, Massachusetts, where David Dempsey uses Fishmonger's Hook and Lime Pollock in his regionally famous fish sandwich. It arrives piled high with fried fish, fresh tomatoes and pickled onions with homemade tartar sauce generously slathered on a brioche bun. The first bite is heavenly, made even more delicious by the knowledge that the main ingredient was procured that morning. Tim and his crew catch, clean, package, and then deliver the fish themselves, ensuring that in Northern New England, the fishmongers bring the freshest fish to the table.